turn it over to David. Um, what, uh, what we're proposing to do today is to familiarize you with the equipment. We're not planning to take any pictures today. We'll probably do that at the next session or the session after. Um, we'll do it first down at Kula after we've done that with the buffalo on the, on the deck up on the end of the here. And you can look through the different lenses out into the payload bay, which is maybe a better way to get the perspective of what a lens covers relative to the, the bay. Although you're not going to be shooting in the bay so much, at least it's a, it's a bit better than just working here. So if that's okay, is that okay as a plan? Um, so this is, this is essentially the flight hardware with the exception of those two magazines will be our, our, our training units only, but pretty much everything else you see on the table here is in terms of the, the camera system. Um, there's various ways of mounting this camera in, in 1G, and uh, they don't really affect you very much, except that we do use the same two holes here when we put the handles on on the bottom of the camera, and I'll we'll get to that in a little, little while. Uh, other than that, uh, there will be some Velcro down here to to uh, actually stick the camera onto the, to the locker wall or the floor uh, to work on it. Um, but that's on the camera doesn't it's used very much up there it seems like. So uh, there are two and you can see the mirror that that you're looking looking you're bouncing your view off of to look at the image which is formed here on this ground glass. There's a checklist here which 21 points on it, and and, uh, and, it, and it refers to the letters which which represent positions in the loading pack. And, uh, and if you follow the checklist, it seems like it's, it works pretty well. Um, uh, we've been we've been uh, I think the last time we didn't even show anybody. We just, the checklist. Let me see if you load it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's do it straight up. The magazines are will launch loaded, um, and uh, the particular emulsion that will be in that load will be determined, I guess, by the cap, depending on what we anticipate you needing at what point. But, and that, and that emulsion will be defined by a, a piece of tape like this one, which would be taped across the latch of the magazine. And that tape will follow the roll of film around it. And while it's in, there's a little latch back here. And this, this latch is, is, we don't have on the ground because, but it's there to keep the magazine from floating off during the, during the loading procedure. It, it, it engages couple of little detents here on the on this bar. So then you open up the camera. All, everything you gotta grab is is uh, marked in red. <coughs> Let me come back to the camera. We open the control line up to the bay. That's right. These are they trap the film against the sprockets. The feed and the take up version. Sure. Uh, there's a registration pin assembly here, and we can get access to that edge guide by by lifting up this top half of it and swinging it out the way. Then it goes straight across the back. Straight across the back. Yeah. And then, and then you. Check your routing, and once you're, you feel like you got it on the right side of the rollers, that's when you lower the magazine. Carefully huh. well, into the position. Is that where bottom B? Same, same deal. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna fix that. That's what we fixed. <laughs> Don't pay any attention. The next to thing that. you need to do <laughs> is get the film down into the into the gate here. It's riding, it's riding 
properly along the, the aperture plate, skating along a slot, which is the counterpart of what's going to trap it up here. There's a 50 thou wide slot that the film has actually got to get down into. That looks like so much fun. One G, how much more fun is it? Watch well, the tricky part right there. Uh, so that's fine. So uh, far, what, yeah. what that happens is you can get hung up if you're in a hurry like I just was. But when you're not, when, when you're not, uh, Close everything up, but you move that and it won't move. You did something wrong. So, you got it in there, I like the way it feels. So, you can put in the pressure plate, and you should still like the way it feels. Uh -huh. Before you take it and tape off, oh, wind up to the back. So, know where that is. You know which way the stuff is coming off. Okay, so it comes off that way, just clockwise. So now I want to put it on. Doesn't engage until you push it way down. So you got to hold it down and, and turn it in order to. And what it's doing is it's, is it's pulling the whole movement over. Only now what we're concerned about is the shutter. So we're trying to get trying to get the lights. Yeah, no. Can you do it without your glasses? Then you'll maintain a better seal light seal. Fuselage, uh, FFT, is that? Yeah. We're going to go in and do the, essentially the same thing there, and we'll work with, with the same things except with the lights, so you get used to working with the lights. So, David? First thing we, we want to do is, is sit fine, you're going to get used to setting it up for your eye, your eye relief, and, uh, and focusing on the ground glass, and then we'll start dealing with the ground glass and the markings on the ground glass and how they relate to IMAX theaters and how they relate to Omnimax. 
So, would you would you like to open the camera up and set up your your eye on on the ground glass? And then lock it up. You want to do that for us as well? Sure. In fact, there's something that I had to do also with open up the cameras. Often you find the cameras in fact closed up when you come to it. Why don't you close it and let them open it, David? Because yeah. you, you need to get a feel for how that button is. Okay, you want to stop when you say open the camera? Well, the, the shutter of the camera is apt to stop. It. There's, there's no stopping position for it. So it's likely to be closed as open. Okay. So the... All right. Okay. Um, the ground glass. Um, uh, okay. Across, the, across, horizontally across the frame, there are there are two dash lines. One that arcs downwards and comes up to about a, it starts at a third of the way up and it arcs down, and comes up again. And there's one that's sort of straight across at that position. And those, what those are there for is to, for you to understand where, where the. The people are in the theater and how they're they're seeing the screen. They're they're essentially they were originally put in as kind of horizon lines. They don't, they're not always used as horizon lines, but they but they give you the, the relationship for for the audience's natural horizon in, in relation to the screen itself. So that and the straight one is is for the rectilinear theaters, for the IMAX theaters. It's it crosses in that in that area are more or less directly in front of the audience. They're they're. Or in front of the, the majority of the audience, and the same is true for the for the arcing line in the Omni the dome theaters. Uh, and it's it's much lower down because the dome frame, of course, extends right up over your head and behind you. And the way that you select. Once you've, once you've decided what the, uh, which, what the key element of the picture is, if it's here or there. Again, the, the, by having different sources, you got different, you know, you kind of got some nice rim lighting around Hank, and you got nice light in, in uh, Mike's face, and uh, everybody got some light. And actually, when the shot ends, which is down below, which where you really clearly see Judy, she's nice as that too. So he found a way to get everybody to get some light, which is quite a good thing. That's quite a successful shot. Uh -huh. you want us to run through on this? About 150 or? Yeah, about that. Okay, because I only went 83 on that. Let me run some more. Okay. Well, are you, the are you done? What, try what I'd like you to do... Uh, change the lighting then and do something a bit okay. different.